Hi, my name is Alex, also known as Irksendale, and I'm going to be showing you on how I made the Ultra Boost and Quiet Comfort ad uh, using Blender and Cinema 4D. So, I've been getting like a lot of uh, DMs and the uh, uh, messages from Instagram and Discord explaining uh, of people asking me like how I do this stuff, how I get certain effects. Uh, where where I get my ideas and all of that. So yeah, um, I'll be showing the Quiet Comfort one, uh, which is my most recent project, and the Bose ad, which is the one I made uh, last year. So yeah, let's get uh, straight to it. Okay, so how I start is I would get inspired by a project or or video, and I put it to a mood board, and you could see here like here's some. Uh, Here's one of the inspiration that I've gotten for the Ultra Boost ad. Uh, it's a, a Samsung commercial, and it has all of these uh, colorful and uh, colorful abstract animations. And here is another project that I've seen on Behance, which is a uh, the shoe. And I've, you could see here uh, from my Ultra Boost ad, you could see I've gotten got the inspiration from shots like these. And this one, I'm taking like a lot of inspiration, and uh, I've mentioned the uh, people I've uh, took my inspiration from in the uh, description of the videos and stuff. So Behance is a Behance is a great place to find uh, inspiration for motion design, especially if it's 3D, because it looks uh, they have like a lot of professional and like the high like the best stuff that you could find here. Uh, I've ga I gain all my inspiration and add everything to my mood board from here. Uh, but it doesn't have to be just Behance. Instagram is also like a a great place to uh, get inspiration. They have a lot of great stuff if you follow like the right people. You know, there's um a lot of stuff that I that uh that makes me that gets me get that gets me ideas and and all and all that stuff. So after gathering uh all the information uh everything that I need, I put them all into one page as a mood board and then I will start storyboarding from there trying to think of what it is I want to do so over here here is sort of the uh, storyboard so here is the storyboard that I made now the original storyboard is deleted because I don't like keeping the storyboard it's uh, archived because I'm really bad at drawing <laughs> and it's I kind of hate it. So what you're looking at right now is basically a faced out version of the commercial. But this is how my storyboard would kind of look like, but worse. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's important to get yourself a plan because if you don't have a plan, then you're going to have to like think on the spot, which is something that um, that can really be a it can be a really big pain. So uh, plan out your stuff, and then you can get yourself uh, working without having to stress about uh, what uh, what it is you want to execute. So the next thing I do is I get myself some reference images for what it is I plan to model. And as you can see here, I have different... I use Blender for modeling, sometimes Cinema 4D, depending on what case it is. I get myself uh, different views. So I get like bottom, side, and top views of my model. And I go ahead and trace, uh, trace it from there. And as you can see, the wireframe, this is how it looks like. I'll switch off the subdivision surfaces so you can see how they and the wireframe mod. So you can see here, I've modeled the shoe, booleans and whatever, and I just uh, take my time on it because I need it to look as photorealistic as I can. And yeah, I'll I'll try my best to get it like looking all right and everything. Uh, the, uh, it's not perfect. There's like I could work on it more, but. Uh, I like to give myself like a timer or a deadline so I don't like slack off or anything. Uh, this is important because there are people, there are certain people who would take way too long on a project. Like, you don't want to spend too long on a project. You want to get it done. You don't want to spend too, like, like you don't want to rush it, but at the same time, you don't want to spend too much time. So you can see here, this is my, uh, my model. And right after I'm done modeling it, you can see I, uh, also have uh, I I depending on the model I would subdivide it as well. So you can see here I can put my subdivisions. If you don't know what subdivision is, it basically makes things smoother. 
Uh, if you want to know more about modeling, you, uh, you there are tutorials based on that. I'm not going to make a tutorial on modeling. Um, so yeah, so this is basically the model. Uh, I c after this process, I would go straight to texturing, but I prefer to do it in a separate project file. All right, so here is where I would do uh, in a separate project file. I would do retopology and texturing. So I would apply all the modifiers, and I would let's say take anything out, any loops that are out or all of that uh, that's unnecessary. Um, if I click this, you could see that there are these red lines. Let me go into the single view. So you can see that these are these are red lines. These are called the uh, the seams. This is something that you need to uh, take into account depending on your model if you're going to be doing uh, uh, texturing. So if I click, let's say, this uh, segment here, right? You could see how this is all laid out. Because if I unwrap it without these uh, lines, then it's going to be all messed up. Uh, you can see here, all of this is unwrapped accordingly. And uh, this is important because the textures are going to rely on how these are placed out. Um, in terms of texturing it, uh, they're all, some of them are procedural, some of them are images as well. So you can see here, this is just a Vorn Voronoi texture. So I'm just uh, lay this out on a plane, right? And this is the uh, mid sole kind of thing. So you could say this is how the texture actually looks like. If I go here, that's how it, you know, that's how the texture is being placed, placed into a bump, which is basically looking, making look like fake geometry, and placed it onto uh, this thing. And yeah, uh, some of these are also just image textures for like smaller details. Uh, and you also have some which are just plain color, like cause some of them don't really require that much of uh, uh, much of texturing. Uh, you also have this, the boost inside, which is the uh, texture. I tried my best to replicate the actual shoe. I don't have it in real life like I do with the headphones, so I try my best to replicate the the real thing. And I even have the uh, the. the uh, other text parts here. For the parts like this, I've used Photoshop or a Photoshop to get the vector data and put it into Blender. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much the uh, uh, texture for the shoe. And when I'm done with it, uh, depending on the software that I use, I would bake them out. So I'm in Cinema 4D, all the textures are processing right now. Uh, you could see here I have all of the shoes um, baked out and retextured into Cinema 4D and uh, it's all textured for Redshift, so you can see here if I click the play button, wait for it to start. I should close this actually, I don't need this anymore. You can see this, I have the textured, um, all the textured, and uh, the colors are actually references, so I just try to follow what, what, I, what I found on Google and stuff. Uh, so you got myself the beige and blue, antique brass, uh, I think this is called a clear orange, I forgot the name of it. Um, but yeah, all the shoes are ready to be used uh, for uh, uh, for animation. And all I do is I basically put the shoes in whatever project files I need. Right. So uh, so as you can see here, this is basically the uh, the animation that I had. It does follow the storyboard, and it's also inspired of that Behance project that I showed earlier. Uh, it's it's uh, it's okay to go a bit uh, a bit like. Uh, it's okay to avoid the storyboard sometimes. If you have an idea uh, outside your storyboard, that's completely fine. It's your project. Uh, it might uh, be different if you're working on like a group project. You wanna, you know, you wanna follow. You wanna make sure everything is planned out correctly, right? So yeah, you could see here I have uh, the animation right here. Uh, this is basically a cloner with a field effector. Uh, nothing too you know, crazy. Uh, if you know how to use Cinema 4D. Again, here is another part. Uh, following the storyboard, you can see here. Let me check. Uh, let me t take textures off. So you can see here. This is also uh, following the storyboard as well. Uh, this is exactly how I planned it. Uh, planned to go out. And as you can see, if you looked at the storyboard, I, I didn't really have these circles or these dots here. They just came up as I was doing it. So as I said, it's okay to go uh, avoid uh, what the storyboard looks like. You know, as long as you as long as you get it uh, maybe accurate or similar. And if you think it looks good, then, you know, you should definitely just go for it and stuff. So, unfortunately, I don't really have uh, the clips for the uh, project uh, 
for the After Effects project file because uh, what's this? I do all my post processing in After Effects, but I will show the uh, videos of of the post processing uh, post processing in uh, for the Bose ad, which I'll show next. So uh, the Bose ad I did in Blender exclusively in Blender. In case you don't have Cinema 4D, uh, you can definitely make an ad in uh, like an ad or commercial in Blender. There's also tutorials on how to make it, but I'll show you like a process of how I did mine. So I'm going to open up Blender again. So as you can see here, we have the uh, Bose uh, headphones. Now the topology is not that good. I was still uh, new to modeling uh, when I made this, but it turned out okay. There is a uh, little issues, uh, especially with creasing that was uh, there. But if I switch on the referencing, so like the Ultra Boost uh, uh, shoe, I got myself some references, side and front view. I didn't really have to get the top. Uh, that wasn't really too much of a problem, uh, but I could. So yeah, I got the side and top view. And what really helped me is that you can go ahead, find like a real life, uh, real life item or product that you have. And you can use, uh, you can do that, because um, as you see here, you could see this. Uh, this isn't, uh, you don't really see these uh, parts inside the, uh, inside the reference. I actually physically have those headphones, and I was able to use those headphones as reference. And that's like one of the easiest ways to actually gain reference for modeling. So all the textures here were made uh, procedurally, and all of that stuff. So there weren't any problems. You could see here. This is how it how it looks like. There's some viewport uh, performance issues. And uh, that's because there's a lot of uh, particles that are going on, going on here. So I'm using this add-on called Molecular Particles, which basically sort of like adds uh, rigid bodies to like a bunch of spheres and stuff. Uh, the colors change depending on the movement. Uh, and obviously this is inspired of the PlayStation commercial by Maxim Zestov. Uh, so you could see here, right, I'm using field effectors to you know, as a magnet to actually drag this in. If I click this, uh, let me get out the wireframe. You can see this, this is like basically the uh, emitter. So this is the emitter. It all starts off in this cube right here, cube formation, and then it drops down, lays down to rest. Some behind the scenes that I've recorded with my phone uh, on After Effects. And it's important to um, put like compose and composite everything in an After Effects or whatever composting software you have, because that's gonna be like the finalizing the look of your of your animation. You don't want it to be just a raw render. You want to have like color grading, uh, post processing like glows, a motion blur. I use RSMB for that. Yeah, uh, that's basically the process of how I do it. Um, in terms of thinking of how you want to animate your own commercial, I suggest you look at Behance or Instagram or any real life ad, and make try replicate. You know similar transitions, similar effects, looks, lighting, and everything like that. Uh, there are people who ask me about my lighting. Uh, I always stick to just really like standard uh, three-point lighting or just like a normal just light just being uh, on the top. You could see here it's nothing, nothing too crazy. It's just the really basic, basic lighting. There's nothing uh, complex about it. There are also videos dedicated to how to light a scene in Blender or whatever software that you're using. Uh, one I can recommend is one by Blender Guru, which which, which uh, really helped me. All right, so yeah, I hope I hope this kind of like helps out uh, in terms of uh, shows like sort of the process of how I do things. It's also the same for anything that's in the Asian 3D commercial. So like if I go here, uh, you could see uh, I also have, you know, all of these animations. The, these are also inspired of uh, of different artists as well. Uh, this was uh, this one was inspired of Half Ear. Uh, I also have a storyboard for this, which also I, I don't have. Um, and you know, there's planning and everything that goes out. So yeah, uh, it's important to uh, you know plan out everything, be a little organized. Uh, if it's a shorter project, it's fine. You could go. You could don't really have to, like worry about it. But for b projects like this, long projects, uh, let's say if we're doing, you know, it, it keeps it more organized and everything is like in place. So, so yeah. Um, if you want more videos like this, uh, I'll definitely make some more and just leave it down below. And yeah, peace.